Yes, you are the Lord, the Most High God. The everlasting King you are. We honor you, Jehovah. We honor you for this day. We honor you for your love. We honor you for your concern. Thank you because you're here today again. Thank you for this program. Living Faith Program. I know Jehovah, you are speaking to us. To the glory of your name. You are speaking to the body of Christ. You are speaking to the entire world. Those who are out there. And have lost hope. That they may find hope. In you Christ Jesus. Because I know. That those who trust in you. Shall never be ashamed. Our hope in you. Will never disappoint us. Thank you, Father, for your presence in this program. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. I need a better amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Welcome to Living Faith Service, Living Faith Program. We are honored to be in the presence of the Lord. To those who are listening from far, the Lord is here bringing hope to you in your house or wherever you are and watching. I know God is going to minister to you in a unique way. He is God. He is God. There is no doubt about it. He is God. Hallelujah. He is God. Say amen if you believe. Amen. amen. He is God. Hallelujah. We are blessed to be here. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's good to be in the presence of God. I want to talk about when God gives you a second chance. Hallelujah. We serve a God who gives us opportunities. We serve a God who gives us chances. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell, tell your neighbor, you can be given another chance. Did you say it? You can be given another chance. Hallelujah. I want to talk to somebody who is listening to me. That our God can give you another chance. I don't know what you have been through. And when you gave up. I don't know what has caused you to fail. I don't know what could have caused your faith to drift away. I don't know what pain you went through. Am I talking to somebody? I say, I don't know your problem. But I know there is a God of a second chance. There is a God of a second chance. Hallelujah. When people are finished with you, the Lord gives you an opportunity. Hallelujah. Because he loves us so much. The Lord loves us so much. The Lord loves us so much. He loves us so much that he will not just let you go. Hallelujah. He can give you an opportunity to correct your mistakes. He can give you an opportunity to come back to him. He can give you an opportunity to repent. Because there is nowhere else. Say nowhere else. Nowhere you can run to and get help apart from God. People have run to politicians and they are disappointed. Politicians have died and their hope will die with the politicians. People have looked upon their fathers and their mothers and your godfathers. May God have mercy on us. But one thing I know, our God of eternity the eternal God who changes not. Ah, he changes not. He's not a moody God. He will not go by moods. No, he is slow to anchor. Man may get annoyed, but God is slow to anchor. Hallelujah. His nature is an unchanging God. His goodness is from everlasting to everlasting. His mercies. And you are forever. Amen. Hallelujah. His mercies and you are forever. Man may be tired of you. But God. 
but God, but God, but God. He knows you have a destiny. He knows you have a place to go. He knows. He knows your future. Tell your neighbor, don't die early. We're not going to die early. We shall live. We shall live. Because our God does not change. Our God is not human. A woman may forget a child who she has breastfed. But God, ah, but God, God will never forget you. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? I said God can never forget you. Our God gives us even a second chance. Tell your neighbor, don't misuse the second chance. Mm. When you have an opportunity to come back, take it. And go an extra mile. Hallelujah. Make sure when you are given a second opportunity. Go an extra mile. Don't be the same again. Say now. I'm going to make it better. Now. I will make it better. Now. The glory shall be higher. Now. The glory shall be higher. I said now. The glory shall be higher. Hallelujah. The glory must be higher. We have a God who can bear with us in our stupidity, in our foolishness. We have a God who can bear with our weakness and he gives you a chance and gives you time. We have a God who gives us time. Hallelujah. And he watches and watches and reminds you again. You know he will not forget. He will remind you. Hallelujah. Who you are and what you are for. Did you hear me? I want to read this book. First Kings chapter number 19 verse, eight, uh, verse 9 to 18. The Bible says. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountains in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came, a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenants, torn down your altars, and put your prophet to death with their sword. I'm the only one left, and now... They are trying to kill me too. Hallelujah. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel king over Aram and also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi over the Israelites and anoint Elijah son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escapes the sword of Hazel. And Elijah will put to death anyone who escapes the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel. All whose knees have not bowed down to Baal. Whose mouth have not kissed him. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to talk about Elijah. I want to talk about Elijah. Just a bit so that I get to the point. Elijah 
is the man. Hallelujah. A man used of God to do what nobody has done today. It's not in record yet about somebody who calls fire from heaven. And if there be, I need to be challenged. Maybe I don't know. But as at the moment, I know about Elijah only. <laughs> so Elijah stood at one point to challenge the gods of Jezebel. The gods that had been brought to the children of Israel by Jezebel through King Ahab. And so the children of Israel were subject to idol worship because of Jezebel. And the Lord was annoyed. The Lord knows how to raise a man. Say raise a man. Who is able to confront situations on his behalf. Did I say it right? I said God is able to raise a man who is able to confront situations on behalf of God. Did you hear that? It is on behalf of God. Amen. And now here is Elijah. Elijah was reasoned by God. Bold and courageous. He went before the king. And declared there is not going to be rain. For the next three and a half years. Until I say. Hmm, hallelujah. Until I say. Praise the name of the Lord. Now this God who has called us. This God who created us. God who is our father. Gives us power. Gives us authority. And that's why I say. No demon should challenge you. If you believe in God. No demon should challenge you. They're going to be there. Demons are going to be there. Devil worshippers will be there. But you. Say but me. But I have authority. Hallelujah. I say but you have power. You have authority. You can challenge powers of darkness. The Lord does not need to come from heaven. He just needs one who believes. He needs one who knows who I am. Before God who am I. I will talk to them and I say listen. I am going to conquer. It doesn't matter the weight. Aha, hallelujah. It doesn't matter who is against me. And you know God is looking for such one. Who is bold enough. To speak on behalf of God. Ha. Hallelujah. So Elijah. Of course we know the story. Rain stopped for the next three and a half years. Until one day. He decides to go and challenge. Those prophets of Baal. I want them to know. For how long are they going to make people stay hungry? For how long are they going to cause pain? It's time to put a stop. Tell somebody, somebody it's time to put a stop. It is time to put a stop. So Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. We know this story very well. And he was able to call fire from heaven. Hallelujah. And cause fire to come down. Consume. Fire consume. Fire consume. And when fire comes from heaven, everybody respects you. When fire comes from heaven, everybody will be subject to you. Ha! Hallelujah. They will be scared of you. Elijah alone called on God Almighty. And fire came down. 450 prophets were killed by one man. Hallelujah. Amen. He was challenged by a woman. After that. Huh? Hallelujah. After killing the 450 prophets of Baal. And after commanding rain to come. And rain came. And this same man. Jezebel sent somebody to her. Saying to go and tell that man. Let, you, let, let him listen good. I am going to do the same to him. 450 prophets never challenged.
changed Elijah. But one woman, one woman challenged a man who has already known his God is able. I don't know what challenge comes to your life that causes you to forget what you have seen God do. I don't know who is this woman who comes into your life when I say a woman. I know you understand what I mean. I don't know what situation comes to your life that will cause you to forget that this God is able to answer by fire that will cause you to fear, that will cause you to drift away from faith. But this man was challenged by one woman and fear took over the faith. Oh no. No. Fear took over the faith of a man who told rain, stop. And it stopped. Fear. I know sometimes the devil is so cunning. He can cost you while you're pursuing your dream. And you've come up so far. You're almost getting there. Tell somebody you're almost getting there. And then a kadibon comes and threatens you and takes you back to zero. No, I refuse. I refuse in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to say, I refuse. Hey, say, I refuse. What is this that will cause me to forget? I mean, I've already tried God. And I've proved he's faithful. I've proved he's able. Hallelujah. So God was so zealous about Elijah. I've told you before that God seeks for such men who can be bold and courageous enough, who can represent a whole nation. And if God knows you have a lot of potential in you, uh-huh, he realizes you have a lot of potential in you. He will give you another chance. He gives you another chance. Because you are an important vessel. Hmm? That's why he gave Jonah another chance. Hallelujah. Jonah did not deserve. But God gave Jonah another chance. Hallelujah. And he made sure Jonah, even if you are in the water and the fish, you will not die. You will come back. You will fulfill your course. Hallelujah. You shall live to see this God. Hey, I'm waiting to see this God. I want to live and see this God. Now, the Bible says now where we are. The Bible says in chapter number 19, 1 Kings chapter number 19. That uh, Elijah, when he heard the voice of Jezebel, he ran away. He ran away to the caves. He went to hide himself someplace. Listen, he went to hide himself and wished, I wish I was dead. Now, I need to announce this to all of you who are listening to me. The higher you go with God, the tougher it becomes. It's not the cooler it becomes, the hotter it becomes. I need to announce this so that when it gets hotter, don't, don't quit. Understand that even this God is raising up with you. Did somebody hear me? Because the Bible says, when the devil comes like a storm, the spirit of God will raise a standard. Hallelujah. No matter how hot it becomes, the hotter it becomes, the higher you go. The higher you go. I say the higher you go with the spirit of God, it shall be higher. Ha. It's like you have been lifted up with a jerk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you need not to fear. You need not to fear. The more the devil threatens, the more happier you should be. Because our God shall manifest himself. Ah, our God shall manifest himself. 
Did you hear me? I said the higher you go, the hotter it becomes, the more the Lord manifests himself. Hallelujah. So now this guy ran away. The Bible says he went into some cave. Did you hear that? Verse 3 says that he went into some cave because he wanted to and desired to die. But God was still interested in him. Even after confession of giving up. Huh? The Lord is still interested in this guy. Verse number 4 and 5. It says, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he, became, he came to a broom bush. Uh -huh. Sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down at the bush and fell asleep. Now listen. This guy slept. After telling God, take my life. But God does not give up there. The Bible says that he sent an angel. God sent an angel. Tell somebody God sends angels. Even to Jesus Christ, he sent an angel to give Jesus strength to go to the next level. Hallelujah. Even God sent an angel to Jesus to give him strength to go to the next level. Tell somebody God will send an angel. God will send an angel. So stop giving up. Ha! Huh? Stop giving up. Hallelujah. So an angel was sent and brought water and brought meat. And the guy ate. Instead of him waking up to go, he slept again. <laughs> then the Lord sends again. A second time. He sends an angel again. To take water. To take meat. Second chance. Eh? Are you there? Second chance. He was given water. And meat. And you know the Bible says after that. He got a lot of strength. A lot of energy. God does not give up on us. If we have unfinished business, aha, if we have unfinished business, the Lord will not give up on you. He will give you strength enough to take you to the next level. So the Bible says that when he was given the second time water and meat, he was able to rise up and he went 40 days journey. 40 days Forty days journey. What does that tell you? It says that the Lord gives us strength and ability to go. Go as far as we wish. Go as far as we can. Ha! Ah, hallelujah. He just doesn't, doesn't give you small strength. He gives you enough strength. He went up to Mount, uh, he went to Horeb. Hallelujah. And now at Horeb is where I want us to listen to very carefully. While he was in the cave, verse 9. Verse 9 says, There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? Now listen. When somebody asks you, What are you doing here? That means you are actually in the wrong place. You're lost. You're missing direction. That's not where you are supposed to be. Your course is not there. Elijah, can't you think? What are you doing here? Elijah, don't you see? You're not supposed to be here. Elijah, don't you understand? Hallelujah. Then immediately after, of course, Elijah had every excuse, every explanation. Let me tell you, the day you walk this journey alone, that day, your destiny is finished. It's cut off. Your destiny is cut off. Hallelujah. It's not about you. It's about a God who walks with you. It was not possible without God. Rain could not stop without God. Rain could not come down without God. Fire could not have come from heaven without God. Did somebody hear me? So this guy explained, oh God, you know, and it is only me. Now they are actually seeking to kill me. The guy 
who was able to kill 450 Baal prophets within that one day is scared of his life now. Can you see? Can you see foolishness of the highest order? Now I want you to see after that was said the Lord asked Elijah come out of the cave. Let me find you somewhere. The Lord says go out and stand on the mountains in the presence of the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Now the Lord is giving Elijah instructions to go to a place maybe you will un you'll get better understanding or you when you hear my voice you will understand better the Lord is calling him out come out and I'll be passing by there and he went you know why the Lord gives him a chance he comes in he comes he allows the fires the earthquakes you know all those things. Uh huh. Hallelujah. And then in a still voice, the Bible says, verse number 13. Verse number 13 says, When Elijah had it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Why did he do this? Because he understood that voice. He knew the Lord has come. Is somebody hearing me? Then a voice said to him, what are you, what are you doing here, Elijah? When you are asked the second time, the first time we bared with your foolishness. Huh? Now this is the second time. The Lord is asking Elijah, what are you doing here? You know that word was meant to make Elijah, before you answer the second time Elijah, you better be walking to where you are supposed to be. Before you start giving excuses Elijah, you better come out of that place because you are in the wrong place. But Elijah could not see that. He's still full of self. I tell you this self will make us die. He's still full of self. I need self-defense, I need comfort, I need peace. How many times have you fought battles? The Lord has conquered for you. Then again when a battle comes you say I need my peace. Who told you peace is going to stay with you as long as the devil is still in the world? Hmm? Peace that we have is the confidence that we have in God. Peace that surpasses human understanding is in between the turmoils we are able to stand. That is peace. Hallelujah. In between the trials, you are not breaking. When God gives you a second chance, don't repeat the first mistake. Number two, when God is giving you a second chance, always remember it is him who enabled you. Number three, when God is giving you another chance, Remember that he's the one who preserved you from the word go. Ah. He preserved you from the word go. Because if you make another mistake like that one, your glory, even if you're coming back, your glory can never be the same. The people that Elijah killed the last minute, the fire that he called from heaven, could not get the people to 450. They are just a small number. A small number. May we not repeat the same mistake. May we be sensitive of the voice of the Lord. May we not miss out when the Lord is warning us. Where are you? Like, or rather, like Adam, where are you? Like Elijah, what are you doing here? Because... Anytime you hear, you hear him say, where are you? That means you're not where he is expecting you. And when he asks you, what are you doing here? That means you're not where he's expecting you. When God gives you a chance by asking you a question, correct your mistakes. Correct your mistakes. Come back on your knees. Seek God. Surrender again. Believe in him again. 
defeat the fears in you. Fears that will hinder you to get your second chance.